Matt Loros here, senior contributor to Young Voices and director of legal policy of the Firearms Policy Coalition, backing up late with me on the Final Five. It has been a while, Matt. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you, Jim. Hope you're doing well. We're, we're hanging in there, and I hope you are, too. It, clearly, you look like you're doing well. Uh, let's, <laughs> talk, let's talk about this, uh, this big debate that's been going on as to what is essential, what is non-essential. And you have a piece in Town Hall where you say, look, uh, gun shops, it's a Second Amendment issue. These are essential businesses right now. Well, it's actually, if you, in that uh, piece, I talk about the fact that we don't even need to get to the Second Amendment to understand that these are essential businesses. Because all of these orders talk about, you know, things that are essential for the security and safety for your home. Mm -hmm. And in a situation where we saw in New York, like 15 to 20 percent of their police were out sick with the virus, mm -hmm. the ability of the government to provide for your safety is reduced now. Uh, all of our social systems are, you know, operating at a reduced capacity. So, yes, especially in these situations right now, a... A firearm, the best means for you know an individual to defend themselves against unlawful force, is necessary to secure the security of your home. There, there was an interesting stat that came out from the FBI. They did 3.7 million background checks for firearm purchases in March. That was that was setting a record. Uh, this has been. Uh, we've seen lines outside of gun stores across the country. We know that the, the, the sales numbers have been high, but also, as pointed out, because you have these lockdown orders in place, you have crime at, at pretty low levels right now. So it, it's, it's interesting to see those two stats where they're at. Well, it's, it is interesting, but it's really logical. These people are concerned and they have reason to be concerned. Uh, you know, when look, when you can't find toilet paper on the shelves, it means that something's <laughs> going on. And it means you're only a few levels away from you know food riots uh, things like that luckily yeah. everything has been under control but now there's a lot of people who would previously not have thought about owning a gun that for the rest of their lives are always gonna you know they won't be able to say that again they know why you might want a gun in your home because they went out and stood in line to get one there was a gun range down in lynchburg virginia that had closed because it didn't fall under the governor uh, governor ralph dortham's own order they took it to court and the judge in that case said and we go back to the Second Amendment. In that case, uh, in the opinion, the judge said, look, Second Amendment rights trump the, trump the rights that a governor has to, uh, to declare an executive emergency, which is what happened in that case. Uh, and, and I think as you see things like the, the, that play out, there is a mindset that maybe some governors, some, uh, some governments across the country may be using this pandemic, may be using the lockdown orders to try and do an end run around some, uh, perhaps some gun legislation that they had tried to pass, tried to push through, but it did not succeed for one reason or another. Yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, look, when, when you look at which businesses they were deciding to shut down in places like Virginia and in California, where Firearms Policy Coalition has launched a lot of lawsuits all over the country about these unconstitutional shutdown orders, it's, it's pretty clear that they're targeting certain people, certain businesses. And I just think it's the most ironic thing ever. You know, if you ask any one of those people that was standing in line at a gun shop whether they thought a gun is essential, do you think they'd say, oh, no, I'm just here for fun? No, <laughs> obviously, when there's people standing in line, they think it's pretty essential. So uh, once this all is said and done, once we start getting back to normal, whatever that normal may be, uh, the fight, I would assume, still continues on this because there are these orders. It's a patchwork all around the country, different states going by different rules. Uh, it's going to be something that is going to continue to be a debate, uh, something people are going to try to push one way or another as we continue to go through the next couple of weeks, months, whatever. Yep, it's going to be interesting to try to suss out what the limits were, you know, what, what are the legal limits of a local government's emergency powers? It hasn't really been explored constitutionally that, that well in our nation's history because we don't have these pandemics happen that often. Right. So, I mean, these, these fights are all over the spectrum, you know, First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, everything is going to be, um, it's going to be busy for a long time. All right. Matt, is that a Christmas tree behind you? No, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but... <laughs> It's, I, it's a triangle tree of some description. Well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what I love. That's the one thing right now as we see everybody doing things from home is you always get a little glimpse into, uh, into what's going on behind people right there. So I saw that and I, had to, right. I just had to... You know, just had to point it out. Hey, Matt well, Lewis here. I, that's so you, though, to comment on that and not any of the other things in the frame. <laughs> well, hey, Matt, we're talking about guns. I'm not surprised to see the guns right. there. It's, but, but then again, you, you know what you're doing. You're a smart man. Matt LaRose here. Good to see you again, my friend. Likewise. Final five back afterwards.